I would like to thank Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation for organizing this brilliant event. I thank them and Professor Reuter for creating an opportunity for me to be part of it. Possibly I am enjoying the best week of my life, meeting the brilliant minds that were my idol in my teenage days and also idol now at my 60 years of age. I feel thrilled, excited, spirited, stimulated. I am sure our younger colleagues will be more stimulated through these events. Uh, <clears throat> I would have loved to see that these brilliant minds are more frequently appreciated. Being the best of the animal kingdom, human beings are supposed to be more appreciative about brains. But unfortunately, the world is not like that. We more appreciate activities of legs, hands, and muscles, not that of brains. So I am from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Um, before it becomes too much boring, I would like to tell you what I want to communicate. Although current civilization is the product of science and technology, society appears to be indifferent to both science and science workers. At least I find its truth in my own country. Developing nations have enormous opportunity to ride on ICT technologies to prosperity. Creation of competitive learning infrastructure may be the only cost-effective means for attaining excellence in science and technology in developing countries because we are not spending adequately in it. So if we talk about the three eras of civilization, agriculture age, industrial age, starting from 1780, and information age that made Bill Gates the richest man in the history from zero in 15 years of time. That never happened before. Globalization in information age. The world is flat. Open opportunities, open knowledge. All that is needed is hunger and training. No need of big infrastructure, large land, or mines. And in developing countries, we have lesser resources. So whether somebody is in New York, or Tokyo, or Lima, or even in Bangladesh, if he has the skill, he can raise the height. Now a little bit about Bangladesh. It is a South Asian country on the largest delta of the world, surrounded by India and the Bay of Bengal to the south and Myanmar to the east. Home to Royal Bengal Tiger and longest sea beach. Eighth most populous country in the world. Our population is 160 million. We are occupying 1,000th part of the landmass of the world, but housing 24,000th part of its population. It means we are raising a baby to adulthood using 24 times less natural resources. 
So our GDP per capita is $1,000. If we uh, talk about purchasing capacity, this will be around $2,100. Literacy rate is 57.7%, .7%, million mobile phones, 6.1% internet users. Uh, if we compare, in Korea, literacy rate is 97.9, India is about 74, Sri Lanka is about 100, 63% of girls cannot cross grade three, and we are spending only 2.3% of our GDP on education, and recommended is 6%. So since we are not investing adequately, we need something else. So if food is not there, you must use vitamins. So I think competitive learning infrastructure can compensate for some of the deficits we are having. We have got a huge population, not adequate number of schools and colleges, dearth of trained teachers, not enough labs. So we need to inspire our young people by introducing competitions, organizing Olympiads in different subjects and disciplines, mass publicity through newspapers and electronic media, inspire young people, and inspiring rewards for them. So these are some of the initiatives we have been doing for the last 20 years. Our students have been participating in the world finals of international collegiate programming contest since 1997, in International Math Olympiad since 2004, International Olympiad in Informatics since 2005, also participating in International Physics Olympiad and other Olympiads. This is a picture of International Collegiate Programming Contest World Finals. About 120 teams. Each team consists of three students. They brainstorm over about 10 problems for five hours. I do not know of any other academic activities in our schools and colleges in which so many students do their brainstorming and solving very difficult problems. We are organizing Asia Regional Contest since 1997. These are being participated by students of other Asian countries. Buet, the university I belong to, have qualified for the world finals of ACM ICPC for the last 17 years. Maybe only four or five universities can boost up such long streak of participation. If I want to humbly let you know that none of the Bangladeshi universities are able to make their room even in the list of 2,000 universities. But thanks to this competition, our students are able to make their room in a list of 50 or 100 universities. And there are five, six such universities in Bangladesh. And as a result, many of our students are getting offer from very famous companies like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and so on. This is International Mathematics Olympiad. Um, about 500 to 600 students participate. Problems are quite difficult. For the first time when our students participated there, we had very brilliant students. But unfortunately, they scored only three out of 42 multiplied by four marks. But nowadays, our students are doing pretty well. They're scoring 70 to 80 
and scoring medals. So this is the, this is the advantage of competition. If we can challenge our students with difficult problems, they will rise to the occasion. They will find their way out, even if we are unable to teach them in the universities or even in the colleges. So first we started um, a program called Pulses in Neuron. We um, gave five math problems each week in the most popular daily newspaper, Prathamalo, with a circulation of 525,000. Thousands of responses came from students. It is not only from students, even their guardians also sent answers to the problems. We call it Math Olympiad, Math Festival, not competition, because competition has a negative impression on students, kids. So this is how we do it. It is very much festival, colorful, thousands of students, equal number of parents and teachers participate in the event. If we look at the developing world, about 115 million children under 12 years old age do not have access to school. 60% of them are female. 150 million cannot complete the first four years of schooling. If we look at South Korea, they were a developing country as Bangladesh was. Once upon a time, Korean students used to come to our country for higher studies. They tripled their investment in education. As a result, their per capita increased from $890 to $17,000. This is a glowing example of success if somebody invests in education. But very unfortunately, in our countries, even knowing about this success, our government is not adequately spending on education. So this is what has happened in Korea. Number of patents, they are well ahead in the United States. And in India and Bangladesh, we are not doing well. Although I know that India is doing much better than we have been doing. I frequently write in the daily newspaper telling about Indian success, but my friend, Professor Narayanan, told about something else. Uh, so how did he do that? We had a few key people who inspired, and we got sponsorship from the um, newspaper, from a bank, and from industry like PSP Group, and a large team of volunteers in organizing these events in about 20 places around the country with the participation of thousands of students. The human beings are superior to other animals, not because they have stronger arms or legs, or they are bigger, but because they have better brains. We have to train our brains through education and create better tools, learn maths, learn computer science. We must recognize math computer wizards adequately. And our leaders should realize that they must invest on education. Uh, we are very proud that Professor Muhammad Yunus is a citizen of Bangladesh. He is a Nobel laureate. He is the forerunner of microcredit finance that is um, existent in many countries. And Salman Khan uh, in time 100. And our kids, M. Dabirul Islam, got the first silver medal from IOI in 2009. And another boy got silver, first silver medal from IMO. And success in international programming contests that give us confidence that 
if we can uh, introduce competitions in every subject in spite of the fact that our education system is not as good, still we will be able to cope up with the advanced countries. We have got ICT, mobile technology to develop competitive learning infrastructure, uh, our mobile internet available, it is 0 0.01 to 5 dollar per day, low cost smartphones are available, lectures, answer quizzes by text, mobile tutoring service and Khan Academy has free online education, tutorials for all basic subjects. But this contest, medals and awards, is it enough? In my country, a student with great aptitude in mathematics, physics and chemistry, good grades, they do not continue science subjects. They opt for BBS, business administration, because the law, job there is lucrative and possibly you, you need a kind of less of brain work. So that is a big problem. And uh, recently, Professor Obama has given stress on it. And they are developing 100,000 STEM teachers by 2021. And federal scientists will also be engaged in, in encouraging STEM studies. And there are other initiatives as well through National Science Foundation and other agencies. And there are private sectors who are also contributing to the improvement of STEM education there. But in Bangladesh, we do not have much about it. Uh, some of the achievements uh, that has happened through competitive learning, you know, IOI inspired 11 year old Gennady Korotkevich of Belarus, who got gold medal in six consecutive years from International Olympiad in Informatics. I am sure his teachers did not teach him anything at all. He found his way out. We had three Bangladeshi students in 2005 who participated unofficially in the regional contest and beat all university teams. Neither did they take any course on data structure, algorithms or whatever. It is the infinite energy of young people. We need to put them to healthy challenges. They find their way out. We know other better examples like Millennium Problem Solver Grigory Perolmium, youngest Fields medalist Terence Tau, and first women Fields medalist Maria Mirzakhani, all proved their potential through participating in IMO. So our problem, massive population, unfavorable teacher-student ratio, lack of funds and resources, no trained teachers, no lab facilities, no libraries. Educational activities, are not popular as well. Teacher students never follow IMO, IOI, other events. Touring awards, Phillips Medal, we know. They, not everybody knows about it adequately. I have seen when this year IOI was held in Taipei, many computer science professors could not tell about it. Science events do not appear to be popular among scientists and science students. This is very important that we can make science popular among science students, science professionals. It is actually not as popular. Educational Olympiads fail to attract sponsors, unlike their interests in sporting events. In our country, if we want to organize one Olympiad, 
that is not mass uh, sponsorship. If we want to organize some cricket game, you will get thousands of dollars, but not any educational event. So, potential measures at good textbooks because possibly we cannot give adequate number of teachers to all those 100,000 schools. Introduction of ICT and TV technology to students and classrooms. Organizing Olympiads in all possible subjects. Mass publicity so that we can attract the attention of young kids. Um, and ensure a generous reward to the winners. So, these are the various contest sites our students have been participating to sharpen their programming skill. And these are the people who are behind the program, a very celebrated educationist whose appearance ensures presence of thousands of students, Muhammad Jafar Iqbal. He has pioneered the introduction of all Olympiad competitions in Bangladesh. And the vice patron in Professor Jamil Reza Choudhury, he is the president of Bangladesh Mathematics Olympiad Committee. And the editor of the daily newspaper, Muti Rahman. And the philanthropist in Alhaz Mizanur Rahman Chaudhary, who has been generously supporting Bangladesh informatics Olympiad activities. And we have a great course in Dr. Mahabub Majumdar, himself a graduate of MIT, Stanford and Oxford, and Stanford and Cambridge. And Munir Hassan, a great organizer of Math Olympiad that is moving things forward. Thank you very much for your passionate hearing.